Hello. Hi, George. How are you? Very good. Good evening. How are you? Baruch Hashem. You're Aggie's brother, right? I'm sorry? You're Aggie's brother, aren't you? That is correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're good friends with Aggie and Bob. Yeah. We've well, met you there a couple of times. They're great. Yeah. Amazing how close the community really is. It really is. You know. It's a small Jewish world, you always say. Very. Yeah. Yep. Very much. Yeah. Uh, well, it's good to have you join us. Thank you. I was very happy because it's a time that I can do it. Bob does a, a shear. The problem is that they don't start till much later. Uh, so it's like nine o'clock right. and I, I, I still try to teach yeah. and work at the VA. So it right. just makes it impossible. Yeah, I hear you. No, this is so, a good time. Yeah. Yeah, this works great. Great. Very good. Jacob, how are you? Baruch Hashem, how are you also? Good, good. Baruch Hashem. Hey. Good. What's going on in the valley these days? We're still around. It uh, hasn't, uh, hasn't sunk into the sea, so we're thankful. <laughs> and it <laughs> has not seceded yet. No, it has not seceded. Despite our best e efforts. Okay. Yes. Newsom is going to leave you out of the taxes. Don't worry. He said the valley's off. Oh, please. Yeah. No, that I, don't, I think Newsom is going to go all over the world. Yeah, that's what he wants to do. He wants to chase <laughs> Californians. That's crazy. Oh, they can do that by the by no, it's clearly unconstitutional. Uh, they can try all they want, but it won't work. These people are crazy to think. You know, uh, they haven't seen a haven't seen some money that they don't that they can't tax and don't want to tax. That's the name of the game. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, oh, okay. Hola, hola. Hi there. Like Ernie said, eight o'clock sharp. <laughs> I guess it's eight o one. He meant eight o two sharp. He, he'll be at sharp, uh, a little sharp. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he's out golfing. Yeah, he's I practicing his putting. Oh, there he is. Ah, 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 behave now. <laughs> is Mario away? I don't know. I didn't see him tonight at all. So. No. Okay, I guess, I guess he maybe caught hook up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I saw. Uh, it was, it was, oh. Okay. So I leaned, uh, there's a lot of uh, activity that follows our shiurim. Halach uh, lamaisa. Uh, Bernie was in Cancun. He came back to shul, and after we learned last week that when you have a aliyah. You should look to the left. So they moved the the Asher Bachar Banu to the left side <laughs> in our shul. I, uh, you the have the only one in the world. The only problem is you can't see through the Balkyre. So that's a small but significant <laughs> problem. <laughs> Unless you make a move, Ernie. It's like crazy. Come well, on, I wasn't there. I was remember I went to Yavna on Monday. So uh, I don't know whoever whoever did that. I want to see how you can see through people. It's very nice. Yeah. I, I think you know. Bernie said. Bernie just said you can see you it know, very when, well. When I lane, I step away while the person making brachas. Right. So right. The brachas. The balkari should stand away. It should stand away. Yeah. Okay, Ernie. We're gonna the rely on you to stand. If that is the halach, why is no one? The, uh, why is no one well, because doing... Yaakov you saw that it's not completely the Mishra yes. Brura ar argued said you should look forward and right. close your eyes then listen you can turn to the left and see the brocha out of the side of your eye also you don't have to move the brocha yeah. yeah. er Ernie, Ernie is it a halacha for the person that has the aliyah to be on the right and to switch roles does that work I mean, can the Balkore stand on the other side? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that why should... not. I don't know why not. That 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 would make sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, now all of us, 
Now, all of us from very young age, that we've never seen anywhere. I've never seen. I'm well, just curious why Norm not. Kernick, Norm Kernick said last week that in Dublin, in the shul in Dublin, they had that. The Balcore and the Oled switched spaces. I switched. But, but Yaakov, yeah. in England, they drive on the other side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're, so they're used to that. <laughs> That's why. That now I sense. understand. Thank you. You, you need a chokham to tell you that. Yeah. You see that? Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm just saying, it's nice. It's not. It's nice when you see Aloch Lamaisa coming out of the Shear. Okay. I'm not sure if Minak doesn't take over that Aloch Lamaisa sometimes, you know. Did we finish the Kriyasa Torah? No. No, you won't. No. Right, we talked about refusing an aliyah. Page 86. I think that's where we are. Correct. The Mishnah Bura 86. I agree. Oh, we learned the Mishnah Bura that. Yeah. that he argued about the Yafo to the left, right. So in terms of the recitation of the brachos itself, the Hagos Maimonides writes that one must be careful to recite the brachos loudly since Kriya Sator is a communal obligation, meaning the, the Tzibra has to hear the Ola make the bracha. Uh, yes. Meaning it's not the whole thing is not a, it's not for your private consumption. It's for the seaboard. Baroy Lomar Barchus Hashem Ushar Barchus Eli Bakol Ram. She is Shmua Ambi Anu Achraf. And the Hagos Maimonios were Perushim on the Rambam, on the Mishnah Torah. So the base, the Shulchan Aruch, or Yosef Karo, accepted this. Oimer Barchu Vabrachus Bakol Ram, the Oimer Balachash Toye, someone who says it silently is making a mistake. Yeshomim Shitzrach Lazo Vach Bakol Ram. Some say that if you said it too softly, you have to repeat it. Says the Ramah. For example, they hear the Balkoire say Amen. They shouldn't answer unless they heard the person actually say the Bracha. By the way, I don't know whether it's coming up in the future because we already did. I mean, because we we mentioned this this morning in shul, um, just to, and maybe it's Chazara that if you start Shmona Esrei with ten people and somebody walks out, as long as you have six, you can continue Shmona Esrei. You can say kedusha. You can say Tachanun, you can say Chatsi Kaddish after Tachanun, and you can say Kaddish Tiskabel with less than 10 people, mm. as long as you have six. And as long as you started Shmon Esri with 10 people, the din does not apply by Kriya Satoru. Can you, you say Kaddish Yotam? Can you say can I No, remember? no, the Kaddish Yosomim need 10. That, that is an exclusion. You, it only the Chatsi Kaddish after Tachnun and Kaddish Tiskabel. And that makes sense because those Kaddishim are connected to the Shmon Esrei. Since you start off the Shmon Esrei with 10 and one walked out, 
you shouldn't walk out. There's a psukim that's, remember, we learned that. You walk out, it's like your destruction. But no, yeah, no, but somebody has to understand. But what happens if somebody's just like standing outside for a second? By, the, the whole Indian was by Baruchu today, but then somebody just stepped out for a second before Baruchu. But by the way, they bring that by Baruchu. Then you can say the the the, the brachos, the, the brachos of Kriyashma, you can say as if you had 10 people there. It's not a nafkamina because after Baruchu, there's really no, no it, the nafkamina occurs when you have Shimon Esrei. You could say Kedusha with can less. You say Baruch, you can say Baruchu? No, no. If no. you had Baruchu with 10 and one walked out, you can continue with the Birchus. Okay, but he has to be there for Baruch. Yeah. Yes, you can. And then, but the Bechidish was, if one walked out and you have nine, you can say Kedusha. And you can say Chatzik Kaddish, you can say Kaddish, this Gabal and Tachnon. But yeah. not Kriyasa Torah. Kriyasa Torah, you need 10, and the Kaddish is Somim. After Eleni, you also need 10. Okay. That's just uh, uh, an aside. Mm. Now, should you hold on to the poles of the Sefer Torah during the Aliyah? This question can be answered by looking at the Gemara and Sukkah, which describe the behavior of the people from Yerushalayim during Sukkah. Tanya, Rabbi Yezir, Ratzor, Koimeh. Kachai aminogan shalam she Yerushalayim. Adam yoitz mebeso, velul vobiyodo. When people left the house, it's not like a, just like just like in the time of Chazal, people wore tefillin a whole day. So on Sukkot, when there's a mitzvah lulav, we take lulav only during Hallel, right, and during Hoshanas. But they they took the lulav a whole day. Um, I was reminded Sydney Teichman and I many years ago. We were in Yerushalayim. And we used to visit and Rosh Hashanah Rabbah, we used to go on the tour of Gedolin. We, we visited Rav Yosh and Shlomo Zavon Arabach over the years. So there was a Rav Gamliel, and he gave a bracha to Dov and Yaakov, my, the, our two sons, and they both got married that year. What was unique about Rav Gamliel? He would sit there in his apartment, he'd be shaking the lulav the whole day. We walked in on him, and he was shaking the lulav the whole day, holding on the lulav, two in the afternoon, shaking the lulav. So the Gemara says, An she Yushalayim, Rav Gamliel lived in Yushalayim. Adam yoitz mi beis of aluvo biyodo. Holach lebeis haknesses, luvo biyodo. Kore kriyashma umispalel, luvo biyodo. Kore betor v'noises kapov, menich al gabi karka. Now, why does he put down, if he's a koyen, we understand. The koyen has to raise his hands in the classic way, so he can't be holding the lulu. Now, what is about Kriya Satoira? Well, you got to put the Lulav down because you've got to hold the Atzei Chayim of the Sefer Torah. The Mordechai, who is a Rishon, you find the Mordechai in the back of the, of the Shas, in first room, that when reading the Sefer Torah, one should hold on to it. For this reason, the Yerushalayim people would put down their Lulav and this is how the Shulchan Aruch rules, the way the Mishnah Bura explains. The, the Olaf or the Ali has to hold on to the Sefer Torah. The Ramo, the, the Olaf. Of course. But that refers to, because remember, that, that's called all the seven, the Sheva Kruyim. Right, Bernie? We call the Aliyahs Kruyim, because they're, technically they're supposed to read along with the Balkore. The reason we have a Balkore, because Bernie asked, why does it say a Kore Bator? The, the Ola is the Kore. Like we call it Sheva Kruin. Now, because people don't know how to lane, or many people don't, and not to embarrass anybody, we have a Balkore. And the people should follow silently along with the Balkore as if they read. Follow up question is Should the Balkore be holding on to one of the Ashokhaim while these were running? So, first of all, I had a minute, I used to hold on to the left one because with the right and I have a yad. But I, I don't see any halacha like that. The Ola, we're talking about the one when he comes, Bernie asks, Should the Balkore hold on to it? So, because of this, did. But it refers to the Ola, that when the Ola makes the bracha, he should be holding on to the Asichai. 
says the Ramah, but some chum minag zeh al mashnema b'yoshua, lo yamush sefer atur zeh mipicha, chazak ve'emats, u'mizeh nogu lo yamar l'mesayim likros patar b'chol pam chazak. That when you finish the sefer atur, you say chazak. Um, it's, I'm not sure where the Ramah understands from these psukim that you should hold on to the Sefer Torah when it says, Lo yomur Sefer Torah zemipicha. That chazak ve'ematz, maybe it implies holding on to it. But I, I don't I don't see it. Says the Mishnah Bura, the Sefer Torah b'shaz brach, ha'inu diyachos b'amudei b'sefer Torah. The Mishnah Bura says he should hold on to the 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 Atzei Chaim, ba'ayin b'bach b'taz shiskimu the base of Kriyat Zarch Gam Kein Lechos b'Sefer Torah. So the Ola should hold on to the Sefer Torah also while it's being laid to the other side, the right the right side. Yesh Dagim Lechos as biyirios atzman al yedei mapa. So I'm at a minute to actually hold on to the cloth. But with, like a right. like with your talus, I be magen Avram, achra kriya mina l'nashik a sefer Torah. Then he says after the kriya you should kiss. Now we have a minute to kiss both times, right? We kiss before we kiss after. But you notice the Mishnah Bura brings the magen Avram that says it's a custom to kiss the Torah afterwards. Sefer Torah hazeh ah. So he says the the pasuk in Yeshua lo yamu sefer Torah zeh the mashma should toif should toif sabiado saying oh this sefer Torah it implies that he's holding it that that's the limud from the pasuk in Yeshua. We mm -hmm. will conclude this section with a question that arises occasionally during the recitation of the brachos before and after each aliyah. What is the halacha if one mistakenly switched the brachos? And recited the Asher Nosan Lanu prior to the reading, afterward, and, and you did the Asher Bacha afterwards, or the Bracha after the reading, the Asher Nosan Lanu before him. The Mishnah Bura addresses this case and rules that it depends upon which Bracha one recited and whether one recited the entire Bracha before remembering or not. Im Toba Bracha Toira, Uposach Asher Nosan Lanu, Umakw Asher Bacha, Im Niz. If you remembered before you said Baruch Ata Hashem Noise Na Toira, you remembered when now usually someone's going to correct the person way before that. Exactly. So if it's remembered before he got to the Chasima, Yaskil you should go back and, and say Ashabakharbanu. Vim kvar omar baruch ato hashem. You should still finish it. So the mission verse says, totally switch it. Finish Asher Nosan Lanu. And I don't see Chaim here tonight. And then that, and then at the end, say Asher Bachar Banu. Od Kasuf Sham. Im Omar Bracha Rishonah Karoi. If you said Asher Bochor Banu, who be Bracha Shnei Tov Yisrael Asher Bochor Banu again, again in this card term, Amru Bracha Tov Asher Nosan Tov Yisrael Asher Nosan Lanu, go back and start Asher Nosan Lanu. Avalim Lo Nizkar Ad La Achos Shomer Bracha Tov Hashem Nosan Tov Yisrael Oda Pam Mitchila Sa Bracha. You should start again from the beginning of the Bracha. The in this card La Achos Bracha Tov Hashem Koydim Nosan Tov Yoimer Miad. That means at the end of it, you say Hashem, instead of concluding with you say again conclude is what the Mishnah verse says. That's an interesting halacha. Now, when you're called up to the Torah, what is the halacha regarding approaching the bima and returning to one seat? Another aspect of receiving Ali relates to the route taken huh. to approach the Bima and to return to one seat. 
the Truma Sadashan, who's a Rishon, writes that out of respect to Sefer Torah, one should take the shortest path to the Bima. Valil is Sefer Torah la Migdal. The Migdal is the Bima. Im Yeshla Lot of Pesacha Oimid be Mizracho be Maila. So these things, like, think about Yang uh, Yisrael of Hancock Park, actually has a stairway on either side. So there's a there's a west, actually there's a north and a south entrance to the bima. The chay liyori ben amigdal, kach ani noeg lalas amigdal with pesach shuhu libedech tzar in koyim. So the truma tzedeshin says, I take the shortest path. I don't walk around because I want to get to the east or the west. Wherever my seat is, I go to the easiest way to get to the bima. The yori ani ben amigdal with pesach acher. But he takes the other way, the long way home. We try to recreate what's in the Beis Hamikdash. In the Beis Hamikdash, we went the shortest way in. We took the long way out. The Beis Yosef, in his commentary on the tour, adds that if both routes are of equal length, he should go towards the right. Now, for example, at uh, Yavna, there is no Pesach. The Bima is in the middle of the thing. It's not like you have to enter the, climb up the a Bima from the right or the left. It, it's all, it's all, there's no Pesach. But if there is a Pesach, you go in to the right one. This is talking about the Koyen. There was a ramp that led up to the Mizbeach. When you went up to the ramp, you always turned right. That you, 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 you always turned right when you got to a corner. The Yorid of Pesach should connect though, and then you go, then if you came up on the right Pesach, you go off to the left Pesach. Did I mean Megillah? Mitzvah Lekanis with Pesach Zev, lots of Pesach Acher. It's more coveted to come in through one entrance and leave through another entrance, rather than leave through the same entrance. And the Shulchan Aruch agrees with this. Take the shortest route. The Yorid Ma'amigdal B'derech Achim go down from the Bima by the other ex exit. Shulo B'derech Arukad Mechom Ve'im Be'ez Adrochim Shavim, they're equal Go in it's the right way. He shouldn't leave the bima until the new person who's going to read next has gone, has climbed up the bima. The Mishnah Bura gives us some reasons. Get to the beam as soon as you can. It's a covered at Sibur issue, so the Sibur shouldn't have to wait. The Gamishim covered at Torah. Barishi Chaviva love him, Amar the crossbow. That the Torah is beloved. He's rushing to get there and not, you know, tap, tarrying and, and going the long way. And, and he should leave. The long way, that you know, going there shouldn't be looked like as a burden. Like we said, should always turn right, like we do in the base of Mekdash. The Yorabi Pesach should connect, though. You leave the opposite Pesach. They base this on a Pesach in Yecheskel. Don't leave the base of Medish from the same gate that you entered, but leave according to the opposite gate. When the Chazan is bringing the Sefer Torah from the Aron to the Bima, you come up. You go to the bima through the right way. And you leave according to the exit the other way. I'm just 
if you think about Yom Yisrael Hancock Park, and you're standing at the back of the shul, you, you, we enter on the left side of, the, of that bima. You don't enter the right side of the bima. When the when the chazan comes down, we walk next. To, we walk near Rabbi Klaus, and we go to the bima that way. Is that the right or is that the left? I mean, that's lachura. When you're standing in the back of the shul looking forward, now somebody facing the bima, it's it's the right. right. So maybe because the shechina is there, maybe it's that's viewed as the right. Uh, Rabbi Yaakov Yella. At Shari said it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You stand well, in the back yeah. of the shul, the chazan comes down and comes to the beam up. Why do you call that the right? It's the That's left true. if you're looking that way. But I guess from the Shekhinah's point of view, it's considered the right. You agree? Yes. And also, I don't know what the Hankak Park of Israel is, but there's no right and there's no left when you ascend because it. The, it's just in the middle. The the ascent is in no, the middle. But, you come on the right okay. side, but you come right, on the but, right side. But you come from that side. You don't, you don't come the other side. Correct. You come from the right side facing the back of the shul. So if you face forward, you're actually coming from the left side. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to yeah. say, Aaron Kodesh is more has greater hashibas than, than uh, the shulchan. And when you're entering, that's where the shechina is in the Aaron right. Kodesh. Right. So, so Bernie says, that the Aron Kodesh is the is the frame of reference because that's where the Shechina is. So it, if you take the frame of reference of the Teva, then we're entering the right side. And Chanam, I think that's how we have to look at it. He says when, regarding the Sefer Torah going, even if somehow there was a longer way, you always go that way. So the Mishnah Bura had shuls like ours. He says in our shuls where the beam is in the middle. Neged Arna Kodesh. Kamash Kazuram of the Simon Kuf Nun Sifhe. In Kain Shnea Drachim Shavim. Vada Oila Bader Himin. With the reference point being the Teva. Kazvach Wani Misha Korno Solalo Sotar Yeshu Lelech Bizrusus Miyad. Somebody is called. For the league, you got to go right away. For what your roots, you shouldn't cover base like You shouldn't run, but you shouldn't dilly dally. Then adsha ola. That means the person who's standing on the bima shouldn't leave until the next ola comes. Mm. We actually usually stay there until the next ola has the has the bracha. You should cover it safe for and we don't want to leave the Sefer Torah alone. Look at the Mishnah Bura says, the meaning is for this, the guy who's standing there to leave after he starts the first bracha already. But if he leaves too early, he won't be able to hear the Kriya well. So that's our meaning. So we're following the Mishnah Bura. We stay up there until the Ola says both of his brothers. And we walk down, ben gavr le gavr. When you leave the bima, you shouldn't run away. Like, like uh, you're running away from school. Rashi uses the same, or Chazal uses the same language. When Kala Yisrael left, Harsinai was like they ran away from school. The Yalkut Yosef records several other important halachos with respect to receiving an aliyah. Here comes Bernie, including the proper position for the Balkore and the Ola, and how to read the words in the aliyah together with the Balkore. This will address can the Balkore stand on the other side, like we talked about. At the beginning of the shear tonight. So he says right away, the Ola has to stand to the right of the Balkore. So we find we have to find out in Dublin why why they didn't have a problem with this. Afilu Marava Kila, 
וחוכם הכל, וכורס הקריאה בעצמו. This is the Sephardi custom in some places where the, where, because the, the Ola would read themselves. Ashkenazic custom is designated by Kora to read the Parsha in order not to embarrass those who are unable to read it properly. Now, if the Balkori gets an Aliyah, like we have the Gabai who stands next to the Balkori. That's what he's referring to. Right, the Moshe Rabbeinu was the agent who gave us the Torah. It has to, we have to have like an agent there. I mean, the Balkor stands to the left of the Ola. The Sfardim lay in the Sefer Torah when the Torah is upright. That's how their Sefer Torahs are. If uh, somebody's seated in the audience, and their Rebbe or their father gets an Aliyah, you stand up. And you should stand until they go back to their seats. And then they kiss their hands. And certainly you should stand while they're walking to the Aliyah. If you didn't stand throughout the whole Aliyah, at least when he's walking back to his seat, you should stand. Nice minute. So the Mishnah Buran 16, I'm reading footnote 15, because I wanted to say this. Records the Ashkenazic custom of having three individuals staying at the Bima, the Ola, the Balkor, and the Gabai, to model the initial reading of the Torah, which took place with Hashem, Moshe, and the Jewish people. There's also a source, Moshe, Aaron, Vachur, Right by by Milchemes Amalek, that they had three people. That's why we have a Gabai, the other Gabai, and the Balkore. I mean, I guess you don't need the other Gabai because if you have the Balkore and the Ola and the Gabai, you already have three people. Continues the Mishnah Baruch. Right, that, that yes, yes, Walter. That didn't, that didn't work in COVID, by the way. <laughs> Well, we had them stand a little further away, but we still had the same pattern, right? No, you had two people. You, you just had two people. You, and one stood back. And, but that's okay. Obviously, it's just the clock, so it's different. Well, you didn't stand next to the Gabbai. He stood on the other side, so you still had three. No, and no, you didn't stand on the other side. He stood away. And... Stood away. Okay. How old will say for Torah? Chayv likro b'fi, b'lachashasakriya. The ba the an ole has to read silently. Mitocha sefer Torah. Yachad im ashliach tzibur. Vene yochel lot says he dechoyva b'shmiya bilvad mashliach tzibur. Mitaim shomer koina. The ole, the ole cannot only listen and try to get credit through shomer koina. The kriya sefer Torah she ain't a chovas yochid. Kriya sefer Torah is not a chovas yochid. It's a chovas tzibur. Lo amrin and shomer koina. If he doesn't read quietly, we have to be concerned that the brach that he made is a birchos vatola. The Balkoire should mention this to the people who go up. He should remind them to read with him. If, if they didn't if they didn't do it, he doesn't have to repeat the reading. This is the halacha as is recorded in the Shulchan Aruch, based on the Zohar, which seems to require that the Ola not raise his voice. Although this is the preferable practice, the Ramah writes that one whose voice is audible when reading along with the Balkhara is also acceptable. See also Pisgah Shuvah notes that some interpret the Zohar to mean that one should not read along with the Balkhara at all during the Aliyah. The most accepted practice, though, is to read along silently with the Balkriya. I have to tell you, as a Balkriya, uh, there are some people 
who actually do it quite loud and it's very distracting. It's very distracting to me as a Valkore. But uh, you put up with it, but uh, uh, it's better if you do it very softly. Um, because otherwise it, it can uh, confuse the Balkari. We conclude with, with a Dvar Machshava. We can close this section. We saw at the end of the previous year that Rav Salavechik used Kriya Torah as a form of re-experiencing the giving of the Torah Har Sinai. In his Sefer Shir Muzecher Abba Mori, this, these were the yard side Shir that he would give on the yard side of his father. And it's been put together as a safer. He mentions another component of Kriyasatoria. We open up with a Dvar Kedusha, Barhu. Can we say Barhu with a minion? Why don't we just start with Barhu? What's this introduction of Barhu? There's a revelation going on. If a person feels that Hashem is close, you have to sanctify the name of Hashem. From the Pasuk, the, the trees of the forest shake. How of the how of da, the fact is, he birchas a Torah maschilos bikdusha b'amirs borchus Hashem avorch mefitza or bohur al al mefitza or bohir al mahusa shol kriya Torah. It shines a light upon the Torah reading. She ba'atz mepula kabbalas or machus shemay, which he says is an act of kabbalas or machus shemay. Thus, in addition to kriya Torah serving as a reenactment. Of the giving of the Torah, of Salvechik says it's designed to be a communal acceptance of the Yom Machu Shamayim. For this reason, the brachos recited part of the beginning begin with Baruchu as Hashem Mavoyrach, which, remember, the Baruchu in the morning and in the evening is an introduction to what? Kriyashma. What is Kriyashma? Yom Machu Shamayim. So now we can think of Kriyasa Torah as. Why, why is the person saying Baruchu? It's like a Kriya, it's like a Kriya Shema, because the act of Kriya Satoira is acceptance of all Machu Shema. Okay, any comments, questions, Ha'aras, as we move away from Kriya Satoira? Okay, page 107. Asal, could you pass, is there anything in there? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I don't know, like my mouth gets so dry. No, my sugar is good. You want some ice? No. No, it's fine. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, page 107. Hilchos siyumat fila. So we've gone in order. We started with Birchas Hashachar. We've done Psuke de Zimra. We did Birchas Kriyashma. We did all the dinim of Shmona Esrei, the Tfilas, the dinim of the Shliach Tzibor. We did the dinim of Tachanun. Now we've done the, we've done the dinim of Kriyasa Torah. Now, how does this, how does the Tfila end? Ashrei Valet Siyon and Alain. After our encounter with Hashem during Shmona Esrei, our additional supplications of Tachanun and Kriyasa Torah. So then the final sections of the Tfila assist us in returning to the physical world and preparing us for the rest of our daily activities. It's like, it's like a novel. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a peak, climax, and then, and then there's a denouement. And now we're coming back to the real world. Thus, we conclude our chakra service with the recitation of Ashrei, Lam Natseya, Uval Sion, Aleinu, Shir Shoyom, and Pitumak Remember, we 
In it, well, in Israel, the Ashkenazim also say pitum haktoros. I daven in the gra when I was there a few weeks ago, every morning. That's an Ashkenaz shul. They also say pitum haktoros, and they end with a with a kaddish drabon. In this year, we'll discuss the halachos of these portions of the tefillah. We learn in volume nine that according to Gemara Brachos, one who recites Ashri three times a day is assured a place in the world to come. For this reason, we recite Ashrei twice during Chakras, once during Mincha. Excuse me. Om Rav Allah, Om Rav Avina. Pol Oymer Tehila Lodavid B'chol Yom Shal Shpami Muftach Lo Shu Ben Oylam Abba. You say Ashrei three times, you have a place in the world to come. Ramon mentions that the customers recite Ashrei the second time Following the recitation of Tachnun and Kaddish, Minag Poshut Loimar, Banachtu Loneido, Vachatsi Kaddish, that's the end of Tachnun, Banachtu Loneido, Vachatsi Kaddish, and then Ashrei, when there's no Chris Tov, we go right into Ashrei. You're not giving any explanation why, what's the significance of three times, twice in the Tila well, because you need it three times. So two times in chakras, once in mincha. I know you need it. Three times, but why three? What, what's the significance of three? It's we're quoting the Chazal. Mm -hmm. Burning Zach asking why three times? Well, it's not in the Torah. But they don't bring a pasuk. Otherwise, it would have been the pasuk. They don't. There's they. they what's the smach of the three? So the Ramah gives us the order. Tachnun, Chatzikadish, Ashrei. By the way, I don't know if anybody else has this meaning. When we learn Tachnun, you say Tachnun seated. But when you say Vanachnu Loneida, you stand up. Right? That's a, that you sit until then. So for example, when the Chazan goes to sit to say Tachnun, you can stay, you can remain seated until then. You have to go back up to the chazan during the sitting part of, of Tachna. Okay. At least that's my meaning. The reason that we cite Ashrei twice as Chakras and once at Mincha as opposed to only once in Chakras and twice at Mincha, that's Bernie's question, or an additional time at Myrin, as explained by the Aruch HaShulchan, is that there's a connection between Kedusha and Ashrei. Vachar Chatzi Kaddish, Right in the Birchas Kriyashma, we say Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. The Alfanim Right, that's that's the Kedusha de Yoitzer. But even though in Shachris there's already two Kedushas, Levad Kedusha de Yoitzer Shena El Sipur. And Shachris has two Kedushas, one in Shmon Esrei, one in Valet Zion. They say that the Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh that we say during Berchus Krishma, that's just a story. It's a narrative of what the Malachim do in Shemaim. That the angels see Hashem, they say Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. But that's not us saying Kedusha. When we say Kedusha during Kriyash, during Shmon Esrei, that's not a story. That's us saying Kedusha. The same thing in Valetzir. So what they're doing is they're connecting the Ashrei to the Kedushas. Because the Ashrei is said right next to Valetzir. So in Mincha, we, we say Kedusha in Shmon Esrei. It's only one Kedusha. There's no Kedusha in Mayri. Remember, Mayri was a Rishus. Right? My, my, the the Shachris was after the Oilus of the morning. Mincha was established because of the Oilus HaTomid in the Ben Arbayim. There was only two Oilus given. Then you burn the Evorim of Pedorim at night. The the limbs of an Ola could stay on the Mizbech all night. So they say the Mayriv is connected to that, but it's not Choyf. 
The, if the Avoim or Pedorim were burnt prior to nightfall, you don't have to put something up at night. So that's the concept why Marv is only a Rishus. Therefore, there's no Kedush of them. So this is all the Orach HaShulchan. It gives us some very nice explanations here. The Gam Ba'ashra Yesh Kedush Asu Shal HaKadosh Baruch. He says, what's the connection between Ashrei and Kedusha? Well, he says there are Kedushos there. The Kedich Siv, Aromim Cho Hashem, Bechoyim Avracheka, Godol Hashem, Umolam Leo, Dor Lodo Yishabach Masecha, Hadar Kvod Eidecha, Vizuz Nor Asecha, Lohoi Reshu Yizbarach Meroyim Akol Brachu Tehila. Kedush Baruch is higher than any blessing and any song we can sing. Shazau Inyan Kedush Kedush. Loimar, Kodesh removed the Mikol Brue Malo. That any other, he, the, he, Hashem is more sanctified than any other heavenly creation, like the Oifanim and the Chayos and all of that, on the Malachim. The Kavachoimer me Brue Mato. And certainly from creations of the world. Hashem Shabigdusha, Oimrim, Molei Cholo Aretz Kvodo. Even though Kaddish Baruch Hu is holy and sanctified and completely separate, still, somehow his essence fills the world. I would even say the universe. In the middle of Ashrei, we're talking about his greatness, yet we mentioned Hanun Varachom. Tov l'chol rachma, v'akol maso, v'enei kol achei saberu, v'hu nosen lehem ez achlam bito, posseh chesedecha. Means these are like somebody who's a nurse taking care of a simple person, right? So Hashem is, we're showing Hashem's gedula, and then the fact that he goes into the world that he feeds us, and takes care of our every need. Al dech shama b'mokam shata motza gedulaso, shama te motza amsunu sonaso. Like what we say, at the end of Yitin Lacham Motzei Shabbos, where we say it's written in Torah, it's repeated in the Vim, and it's thrice in Ksuvim, that wherever you see the Gedul of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that's where you see is Anivus, and we quote Pesukim there as well, it's similar to here. According to Orach Hashulchan, the number of times Kedusha and Asher recited was designed to coincide. This is because both are meant to sanctify Hashem's name. And Ashrei illustrates that his greatness goes hand in hand with his care and providence for all of his creations. So the way what I'm understanding here is that when we say Kedusha, in the same place where we say Kodesh, 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 we say Kvodo Malei Alam. What's the Indian you were saying? Molei Chol Aretz Kvodo. In the same sentence, we talk about how separate he is. He's Kodesh Muvdal, and in the same phrase, he's in the world. That's the, it. Seems like that's the concept of, of. And let's connect it. In what bracha do we we say in the? It's an it, kedusha is in the bracha of Akela Kodesh, right? The first bracha is Mogin Avram. Second bracha is Mechai Mesim, which is Yitzchak. Avram is Avram, Mechai Mesim, and the Mechat Kel Chaim is the Mechaz has to do with Yitzchak. Then, normally without Kedush, you say Ata Kodesh, Zivach Kodesh, Bracha Zerah Makela Kodesh. Who's the Av? It's Yaakov. What? Kodesh, a Kodesh is someone who's in, what did, he, he was elevated, but he's also in the world. He, he he took the the sheep and he made tefillin out of it, right? When it, with that whole thing that he did, and, and he we stole from Lavon. Yaakov was a person who had kedusha. Kedusha represents the combination of being in the world, but sanctifying everything in the world. That's what I wanted to say. So you see the concept of kodesh kodesh meloch It's the same thing with Hashem. He's kodesh, but he's in the world. We see that. That Yaakov Avinu is the representative of that. In fact, Tiferes is a combination of Chesed and Gvura. Torah is the, the world of mitzvahs where we take tefillin, which is a leather thing, and we elevate it 
that's uh, that's under the under the guise of Torah. That's uh, often called transcendence and immanence. God's two qualities. He's transcendent. He's also immanent. He's above the world and also. But, is, but in the world. So that's perfect. That's the and that's kedusha. Yeah. It sounds like a sulam also. The sulam. And that's by Yaakov. You see, right? He's Shemayim and his feet are on the ground. He's the one. And that's why Yaakov's Avinu face is the one on the Merkava. Mm. Right? There was, it was a human face. There's a lion. There's a Nesher. There's a shore. So Chazal tell us who was the face? Yaakov. That's why the Malachim were going Oilim Viyordim Bo. They recognized, oh, that's Yaakov. Rashi says that. Yeah, I said the, the Merkava. The chariot, the chariot had Yaakov's face because he's the Kaddish. We're all uh, God's um, holiness is, is emanating from his own from uh, Amisra. Right, you make you make you make you make, you make kedusha. Yes, well. We can't hear what Bernie, Bernie said. Bernie was saying that the people, what did you say, Bernie? The third bracha, the whole yom yalucha sela, we. The yeah, he said the, the people, the whole yom yalucha sela, we, the people, are also also sanctified. We're part of that kedusha as well. That's why we say kedusha, and we make kiddush Shabbos. We're involved in that process as well, is what Bernie said. The Arach HaShochan then offers another explanation as to why Ashrei is recited twice at Shachris. It is a request of sustenance. He's going to say, you know, we're about to go out to work. So, right? And to complete the sustenance of the soul and the body, in Pesuch and Zimmer, we requested spiritual abundance, food for the soul. Now we're requesting material substance, good food for the body. So now we're learning that Ashra Valitzion is a big school for Parnosa, for business, because that's what they're saying. That's what the Archa says here. The Fisha. She chanenu mozen anefesh bekriyashma utfila. He says we we prepared or requested food for our soul. In Kriya Shema and Shmon Esra, the Talas Utfilin, the Yichud Hashem Bavaso, unifying His name. That's when we said Shmai Yisro Hashem Alkin Hashem Echad. Lachen Mavakshim Ata. Now she Shpiel Lano Bechaz B'Mazon Aguf. Now we ask for Parnosa. She Tin Lano Es Achleinu Biito that we get our food the right time. She has Mila Kol Ish V'Ish Day Parnosa So V'Zeu Posech Hasedem. So, and the point is particularly pertinent this junction when we conclude our morning tefillos and prepare to go out into the world and attempt to earn a livelihood. Precisely at that point, we ask Hashem to sustain us and enable us to have sufficient means to support ourselves. Now, Lam Natsaya. Just before we start Lam Natsaya, those of us that are learning Navi together Saturday night, when, when David prepared to go fight Avshalom, we learned what what Mizmor was said. Lam that uh, they said this in preparation to go out and fight the battle. Let's see if that ties in here. As mentioned above by the Ramah, Lam is customarily recited following Ashur. Although Lam is not mentioned by the tour. The Orach HaShulchan explains the reason for it and the particular emphasis on Hashem being the God of Yaakov. Kivan Shonim of Akshim Parnas Haseinu, it's interesting, we already talked about Yaakov. Lachin Omri Mizmor Yancha Biyom Tzara. Uchumor Sha Omri Bishili Brochos. Lama Ksiv Yisagef Choshem Eloke Yaakov. In that capital, it says Hashem will answer you when you're in distress in the name of Yaakov. Why not Yitzchak or Avram?
If you have a beam in your house or you're carrying a beam into the house, you should carry it at the thick port of the beam. Let's listen to Rashi, Perish Rashi. In You got to move a beam from one place to another. Carry it from the middle, from the thickest place. Climber. Yaakov shekolabonim shelo, the Torah begidulam. Yaakov had all of his children, and they were all tzaddikim. And he gave a lot of effort to raise them. So he's the one who should request mercy. Tsar gidul bonim. Yaakov had tsar gidul bonim. The Torah of Farnasim, he had to go out and make a living. Again, you notice we're about to go out and make our living. This issue of Yaakov, who, who made a Parnasa, we say it right before we go out and make our living. That's what the Archa Shochan says. By the way, Rashi explains, look at the footnote too. Tomorrow means to say that the owner of the beam who is carrying it to use elsewhere, should hold the thick portion of the beam himself, even if others assist him in carrying it. it means he has to have the load. So according to our Hashukhan, we recite on that to ask Hashem to save us from suffering so we can properly provide for our families. The Piske Tshuva signed the Abu Dram, right? The Abu Dram was an Arishon. We have a Siddur of the Abu Dram. So a lot of our Nusach follows the Abu Dram. Adds two more reasons. As a way of declaring that we hope our tefillahs for Sayyidin Shimon S will be answered. As a prelude to Valetzion and mention of the Gula. Right? The Tama Mir Islam at Sech Yancho, the Itzbe Medrish, Yud Ches Mizmoirim, Omer David Ad Yancho Hashem Keneged Yud Ches Broches. He said the first 18 chapters of Tehillim until Hashem answers them in, in Tehillim 20. Let please answer my davening. So since Ladan Sech is the 20th capital, it like follows Shmon Esrei because it's the 20th. Since the Ladan Sech talks about the end of time, but we gave a reason when we learned in Shmuel, we, we, gave, we gave the reason of this Yud Ches. It, we, we said it follows Shmon S, right? But I think it says because since he said it in preparation for battle, and we're about to go out and you know battle the world, I think there was some connection there. There are varying customs as the, whether to recite Lam Natsech on a day was taken was omitted. The Sephardic custom is not to recite it, as the Yakut Yosef says. Mishum when they say, when they don't say tachanun, they don't say lamnatzeh. We don't mention bad days when they don't say tachanun. If there's a chosen or a burst, we don't say lam We also don't say vidu. Remember this farim say vidu after shmon esrei. But the Rama records the Ashkenazic practice to recite it, except on a more limited list of days. There are days where we don't say tachnun, but we say lam Except Novad Rosh Chodesh for Chanukah. So Rosh Chodesh Chanukah, we don't say Lam Natsech or Chana or Tachnun. Upurim, the Erev of Pesach, the Erev of Yom Kippurim, it is Shabbat. The Pischei Tshuvas adds that Lam Natsech is emitted in a Shiva house. The reason given are the same as those offered for meeting Tachnun. A state of mourning is compared to a holiday with regard to reciting Tachnun Lam Natsech. We do not wish to mention distress or suffering. Which would cause the Midas Adin to bring further suffering. In sixth, Ramad does not place Isru, Isru Chag on this list, indicating that one should recite Lam Natsech on Isru Chag, even though we don't say Tachnun. Rav Yaakov Emden writes 
that one should admit lamnatzech, omit an isurchak. Most Ashkenazi communities follow the ruling of the Ramah, but many in Eretz do not recite lamnatzech on isurchak because it is still yotav in the diaspora. Right? On our eighth day of Pesach is isurchak for the Israelis. So they don't say on that sech on that day either. Says the Pitzchei Tshuvas v'chein b'vei se'eva le'nonim lan atzech. Aval k'shesh chos n'bal b'riz b'vei se'knesses o'yemir matziber lan atzech. So he says a chos or a b'riz does not exclude lan atzech. Rak a chos n'bal b'riz lo yomu. The bali simcha don't say it. Leminak asfardim gam kol atziber lan atzech. The asfardim don't say it together. Because the baby suffers during the b'riz. So it's it's not proper to omit lam natzech because there is a tzara in which we ask Hashem to save us from suffering. Okay, so uval etzion, which will have some very interesting things in it. How exactly should we do it? Do we do it right? Whatever. Um, for next week, any comments, questions, or arrows? Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Have a great week, right. everybody. Nafyoy me tomorrow at eight. Right. Uh, and the Navi Shear for those who participate, seven thirty this week, seven thirty at night. Motzi Shabbat. Thank you, Ernie. Thursday night, Nafyoy will be seven thirty, and then Friday will be three thirty. Nafyoy. Have a good week. Have a good mm -hmm. week, everybody. Me too. Uh, uh,